Hello, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. We invite you to our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional Bible studies. And now, with his study in the Book of Romans, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Romans. Tonight is study number 45 in Romans chapter 3 and we're continuing to read from verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Well, um, we're continuing to discuss this whole idea of God's salvation program, really, this gets to the essence of it, the very heart of it. And, and as we um, consider what God is saying here and, and other places in the Bible, we can only conclude that there is no law that man can keep that can get himself saved if there were such a law, then he would be able to boast or glory. And this is um, the major reason why that the, the gospel, that the vast majority of, of churches and congregations teach concerning accepting Christ and making a decision for Christ and exercising free will to um, to receive Christ is false. It is a false gospel. It is a gospel contrary to the law of God, contrary to the Bible, because the Bible is God's law book, and the law of God will not allow it. Once men go that uh, route, they they determine, I'm going to except Christ, they have placed themselves under the law because God has commanded, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We looked at 1 John 3, verse 23. This is his commandment that ye believe. Once you have a commandment, once you have a law, and then someone says, I'm going to keep that law, whatever it is, whatever it is, in this case, it's a law concerning faith, and they say, I will keep that law and thus be justified and obtain righteousness in God's sight through the keeping of that law of faith. They have placed themselves under the whole law, the whole law. And we see this if we go to Galatians chapter 3 in Galatians 3, um, where... We we read in verse six and and we'll see how this will tie into um, our upcoming discussion on Romans chapter four. It says in Galatians three verse six, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith. The same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And uh, just to interrupt for a second, that is the exact point God was making. In verses 29 and 30 of Romans 3, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the Gentiles? 
Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision, that would be the Jew, by faith, and uncircumcision through faith. It, it, it's all according to faith of the Jew or of the Gentile. Now, God will expand on, on this point in Romans chapter 4, um, where we read in um, verse 9 of Romans 4, Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. In other words, Abraham himself was not circumcised when faith was reckoned to him for righteousness. And, of course, it wasn't his faith. It was the faith of Christ. And, 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 and so it goes on to say in Romans 4, verse 11, And he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Thank Christ. Thank Christ. Uh, Christ is the essence of faith through the righteousness of Christ. Doesn't the Bible tell us that? Actually, in the very next chapter of Romans 5, for by the obedience of one, Many are made righteous. That is through Christ's righteousness, through his obedient action towards the law of God as he bore the sins of his people and, and he did it all by faith. The work that was finished at the foundation of the world was Christ's work of faith. Well, going back to Galatians 3, um, we... Uh, again, in verse 9, it says, So then they which be of faith, and this could be Jew or Gentile, any human being uh, who God has chosen, are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Because, Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. If you're not justified, you're in your sin and the curse of God upon the sinner and if because of his sin remains. And, and so he's under the curse for it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. You see, if you're if you place yourself under the law, if that is the way that you intend to get right with God, whether it be, you know, the keeping of the law of circumcision or the keeping of the law of baptism or the keeping of the law of believing, if you go in that direction, then you must continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. The book of the law is the Bible. You have to obey every law perfectly. For whosoever shall uh, offend in one point is guilty of all, we read in uh, James chapter 2. And then it goes on to say here in Galatians 3 verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Now, notice the similarity with Galatians 3.11 and, and Galatians 2.16. Galatians 2.16, once again, 
knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. You see, we're told in Galatians 2.16, whose faith, whose faith it is that justifies, that saves, that, that is acceptable to God. But in Galatians 3.11, it's not addressed or, or it's not directly tied to the Lord Jesus. Uh, it, it, again, I'll read Galatians 3.11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And, and then their man thinks he has his opportunity. Oh, he quickly rushes in. My faith, I believe, Lord, I believe. And, and no, 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 no. The faith of Christ, always, 100% of the time, whenever the Bible is speaking of saving faith, you and I and everyone else can be absolutely certain it is not our faith. It is not man's faith because faith is a work. Faith is a work. First Thessalonians, and I mentioned this before, but let's read it again. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you uh, take out the labor of love and patience of hope, that's how it would read. Your work of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Work of faith. Because God commands it. And what is a work? A work is any attempted act of obedience towards the command of God. And also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, we read, Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Faith is a work. Therefore, man cannot become justified by doing the work of faith in the sight of God. Well, now uh, you might be saying, I'm confused. I'm confused. Because if we go back to Romans 3, wasn't God's whole point concerning uh, faith that, that it, it could be done and, and it would rule out boasting or glorying again? Romans 3.27, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. The law of faith. And, and this is why men think, I will believe, because this is God's law. It's his law of faith. It excludes boasting and glory. But no, that's the error. That's the error. It, 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 and, and we have seen men do boast. They do glory in their faith that got them saved. So, no, that is a wrong conclusion. Well, what then is the proper conclusion? As it goes on to say here, verse 28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Then it cannot be man's faith, because man's faith is a deed of the law. It's a work. Work and deed are the same thing. And, and that rules it out. It rules it out. It must be faith that it um, would apply to or fit. Um, it, it's a law of faith. It's in the Bible, in other words. God has written about it. It's in the scripture. He speaks of it. And yet it cannot be man's faith. And, and so if we go back to... Uh, Galatians 3.11 again. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Now this is very similar to what we read in the Old Testament book of Habakkuk because it's the same gospel, Old Testament or new. Noah 
what found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And, and what does God tell us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. If it was of yourself, it would be a work, and you wouldn't be saved. But for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is Christ's faith, and Habakkuk 2, verse 4, proves it. Uh, it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. His faith, the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Galatians 2, 16 confirms that understanding knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. His faith is what's in view. It is the law of faith. If we think about this a little further, um, well, let's go once again here to Romans 3, and we'll move on to verse 31. And it says in the last verse of Romans chapter 3, Do we then make void the law through faith? And this idea of making void, or the word void, has to do with of none effect. And, and so what God is um, uh, really asking here, or um, presenting uh, the question that maybe some critics would come up with, that your law of faith, the fact that you say that men can be justified by faith rather than the deeds of the law, actually will make void the law. It'll make it of none effect. None effect. And, and we've heard people say that, um, you know, if, if you don't have to do anything, then people will not um, do the law of God. They'll not follow the Bible. And, and, of course, God um, says, uh, God forbid this be the case. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. And the Greek translated as God forbid is me genoito. The word God is, is uh, not in the Greek. And, and it's a very strong reaction that really could be translated, may it never be. May this not possibly be. Yea, we establish the law. So the law of faith, that is that the sinner is not saved by any work or response to the law of God, the Bible. It, it has nothing to do with whether he can keep the law on, on one point, such as belief or any other point. No, that is an impossible pathway. No one is justified in the sight of God who goes down that road. But the law of faith is that God has written about a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has done all the work of saving on behalf of the sinner. And there are certain sinners, not all, but a certain select group, the elect of God, that Christ has died for and has demonstrated his faith through his works of bearing their sins and being slain and smitten by God and then rising from the dead to justify them. That is justification through faith alone, Christ alone, through the work that he did because faith without works is dead. And he is the faith, and his works are that which accompanies his faith and proves his faith. That is the law of faith of the Bible that God has provided for salvation. And this does not make void the law. It does not make the law to be of none effect. Rather, it establishes the law. It makes the law to stand. The Greek word translated as establish uh, is often translated as stand. 
actually over in uh, Romans 5. In Romans 5, I'll read the first couple of verses. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Now notice that we have access by whom? By Christ. We have access by faith into this grace. Doesn't that sound like Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? For by grace are ye saved. Uh, and, and I'll read it again. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And that's our word. Wherein we are established and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. You see, it is Christ's faith that establishes the law because he kept the law perfectly. Perfect obedience, perfect fulfillment. He, he fulfilled all righteousness. He did everything according to what has been written. And, and, and so it's all legal. It's all just and right and holy and good and upstanding in, in every imaginable way, in every possible way. The work of faith performed by the Lord Jesus Christ for the sake of his chosen people, it fulfills all the law. Uh, one other place that has the same word that was translated as established, and it's in Romans 10. In Romans 10, I'll start reading from verse 1. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, there's the same word, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. See, the law was given that every mouth be stopped and all the world become guilty before the God because by the law is the knowledge of sin. And sin leads us to desperate uh, beseeching of God, desperate prayers. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon me. It takes us, the, the violations of the law, the transgressions of the law, take us to the end of the law, who is Christ, who has fulfilled all the law. And, and the law has laid out a way of substitution, a way of atonement through the Messiah. And, and so Christ has followed the law as God has uh, written it, and he has accomplished that wonderful and merciful and gracious and magnificent work of salvation for his people. You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Visit our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.